Chapter 6 Five Little Sailor Boys Going In For Law One Got In Chancery And Then There Were Four One More Of Us Acquitted Too Late So she wasn't passed over after all. I could have told her that wasn't likely to happen. It's almost more than I can bear to stay in the house. Five gone now. Five lying in their rooms under those sheets. Cold. Forever cold now. Steady on, Vera. We can't lose our grip now. Bleak House by Charles Dickens is a scathing indictment of the Chancery Court until it was merged with the common law courts in 1873. At its worst, cases of estates and inheritances could carry on for the entire lifetimes of those involved. To get caught in Chancery Court literally might have meant one could die there. I can't help but feel that Mr. Owen has that particular fate reserved for me. My time would appear to have come. Miss Brent refused protection, at least what mortal hands could provide. Will you, Judge? Not at all. I welcome it. My days on this earth may be few at this point. All the more reason I relish every one. But it was the participants in the cases whom the Chancery Court often crushed, not the judges. An interesting point, Miss Claythorne. I'll certainly have to think that over. There is another point I'd like to make. There usually is. One of us is a murderer. Everything must be done to safeguard the four of us who are innocent. Mr. Lombard, you have a gun. I'll be damned if I'll give up my revolver. Happily, there are enough of us still alive to force the issue if necessary. Oh, very well then, since you've got it all taped out. It's in the drawer of the table by my bed. I'll get it. I'll just keep you company if you don't mind. How are you holding up, Vera? I'll be fine as soon as Philip returns. Any idea why Miss Brent might have gone to the apiary? Even with her belief in divine intervention on her behalf, I don't see her going there of her own free will. A good evening to you, Miss Claythorne. Stay safe. What can we do to best protect you, Judge? We must protect each other. Miss Claythorne is right. It may be only my ego insisting I'm the next victim, even if I am. Owen is running out of time. Your brother is certain to raise the alarm if you don't return tomorrow. That means a boat, weather providing. Owen still has much to accomplish before then. If I'm guarded, he may well pass me over. Perhaps drop his little rhyming schemes entirely. The innocent among us are all equally at risk. What's your opinion about how Miss Brent got to the apiary? That one point has been worrying me like a bit of beef stuck between my teeth. It seems obvious to me that she wasn't carried. She was lured there. How, I don't know. But it had to be by the one person amongst us she would trust implicitly. But who would that be? I'm afraid my deliberations have come to focus on you, Miss Claythorne. If you gentlemen will excuse me. Vera, you shouldn't be alone. As long as Philip and Mr. Blore are together, and you three remain together, I'm perfectly safe. Thank you kindly, Judge. How are you holding up, Doctor? What? Oh, fine, fine. Never better. What can you tell me about Miss Brent's death? Multiple bee stings, severe allergic reaction. She never stood a chance. Any idea how she got out to the apiary? Walked, I expect. Oh, I see what you mean. Not the place I'd choose for a stroll if I was allergic. Must have been lured somehow. Or coerced. Good evening, Doctor. Perhaps that will satiate the good doctor's sweet tooth. Are you sure you can't tell me any gossip surrounding the Seton case? Gossip my eye. I got it directly from Sir John Matthews KC, who was observing. Not a doubt of the verdict. Acquittal was certain until Wargrave summing up. What did Matthews say went wrong? Sir John thought that Wargrave's well-known ego had grown even bigger than he himself could handle. That he swung the case against Seaton for the sheer joy of doing it, simply because he could. That's a serious accusation. There was another similar incident just last year. Hushed up, of course, but the word was the judge's retirement couldn't have come at a better time for him. 
However, I feel obligated to add that the judge still has a fine old brain. I have no trouble whatsoever in saying that I rest easier knowing he has put his mind to solving our present predicament. If you'll excuse me, Doctor. Snooker, Doctor? I'm not sure I could give you much of a game. Hands. Hands are a little shaky. But I'll try if you like. Excellent. in that table, I tell you. I'm going to search you whether you like it or not. You fool! Can't you see the lock's been forced? Narakot, will you help me search him? I won't resist. Nothing. Now it's your turn. Not even a stray bee. And you, Mr. Narakot? Go right ahead. Nothing. That leaves Armstrong, the judge, or Miss Claythorne. The killer could have simply hidden it somewhere. I'm going to search everyone anyway, and if it's hidden, I'll find it. And I'm starting in here, if Mr. Lombard has no objections. Help yourself. Try not to make too much of a mess. There's no Rogers anymore to clean up. you some more later. I promise. little sailor boys. I'm glad none of these figurines represent me. Or rather, I hope none of them do. Well, Doctor? A dangerous game. If it fails... Ah, Mr. Narakot. Any luck finding the revolver? None. Mr. Bloor has searched us, and I heard Miss Claythorne yelling at him to watch his hands earlier, so I suspect she's been searched as well. The murderer has had plenty of time to devise a hiding place. I don't fancy it will be easily found. If you'll excuse us, we'll continue our game. What's this? 
There's something written on the bottom of Narakot's plate. So lid a mind. Solidamide. My dear sir, that is a deadly poison. Owen has undoubtedly poisoned you. Is there an antidote? Yes, turpentine oil, but I have none in my bag. I don't feel anything yet. How long do I have? You won't feel anything until, um, until you can't feel anything. You have an hour or so, I'd estimate. No more. I say, turpentine oil can be found in Bellman's Universal Embrocation, a patent medicine for rheumatism and minor aches and pains. I never prescribe it. It can cause a nasty rash if over-applied. But there may be some in the house. Beastly night again. I can't see why anyone would want to build a house here. With war coming on, it may be useful as a coastal watch post. The generator again. No one's going out in that school to repair it this time. Obviously, the waiting is over. Mr. Owen has made his next move. We mustn't let our guards down. Only one of us can be alone. The rest must always stay together until that person returns. May I claim that privilege, Judge? I'd like to go get my wrap. Of course, my dear, but don't be long. I shan't. Do you really think there'll be a war, Judge? I don't see it myself. One world war should have shown any sensible person the folly of such a course. My dear Doctor, if there's one thing I believe Mr. Hitler is not, it is a sensible person. <coughs> that was Vera screaming. I think it was coming from her bedroom. There's a wind coming from Vera's room. That sounded like it came from the dining room. He's been shot. Death must have been instantaneous. The figures! Look at the centerpiece! They say trouble comes in threes. It would appear that they're correct. First poison. Then the generator, then the poor judge. I'm not feeling so well. I should try and do something about it. Impressive. Not exactly my style, though. Hello, what's this? The flower stuck to bits of it. Aha! A fingerprint! Let me examine this further. This appears to match Emily's fingerprint.
This petrol tank is empty. The petrol tank is now full. The generators seem to be working fine. Maricott, leave the investigation to me right now and find yourself an antidote. Sir, I again must say in my medical opinion, Bellman's universal embrication is your best chance to counteract the poison. That did the trick. I feel much better now. <laughs> 